Hello everyone, I'm Hillary with Dominion Tea, and today we're going to talk about the different types of breakfast teas. So we get asked pretty frequently, what's the difference between English breakfast, Irish breakfast, and for some people you may never have heard of it, Scottish breakfast. Uh, and it's a fun kind of exploration of black tea and blending. So quick history lesson, right? Nobody's exactly certain when English breakfast came into being. There's a general understanding it's surfaced here in the United States around the Earth mid about 1830s to 1840s. Um, the citations and tracking down who exactly brought it in and which tea merchant gets credit for it are not well documented. However, English breakfast is generally um, predominantly Kimun tea from China blended with the Somme. And it may or may not have Ceylon tea in it, right? So remember Ceylon's out of Sri Lanka. Um, but it's predominantly Kimun. So this is gonna be a lighter of the three breakfast teas because the Kimun Black's grown at higher elevations, right? This is our Camellia sinensis sinensis plant, so smaller leaf, and it's gonna come in softer. Irish breakfast is gonna be the reverse. So Irish breakfast is predominantly Assamica, right? So it's coming out of India. This tea surfaced in the United States towards the late 1800s. Again, not a lot of great documentation on who gets credit for creating it. Uh, it is mainly Assam tea. This occurred during the close down of China, where China and the emperor again shut its borders to trade. Um, the only black tea that was available was coming out of India. And so that's what flooded the US market and it got given the name of Irish breakfast. So it is predominantly Assam tea. It will have some Ceylon in it and some Kimu. Last but not least is Scottish breakfast. And this one cracks me up. Um, again, not a good amount of history on exactly where this came from. The Scottish breakfast is actually Ceylon tea. And, and a little bit of the story is, is that, um, of course, uh, Ceylon tea, a lot of the original plantations and the individuals who came from England to work on the tea plantations when the coffee died uh, and the coffee plants died of rust in Sri Lanka were Scotsmen. Uh, and so it was another way of saying, hey, this tea was grown by people from Scotland by calling it Scottish breakfast. But it really is nothing more than a Ceylon OP1. Um, and so this has a totally different character because it is just the straight Ceylon tea. Um, so beautifully floral plus woody. So how do you know what you're getting? Well, here's the fun part. In the industry, there's no set standard. Um, it's like, what do you adhere to when you make your blends? So you gotta talk to your tea merchant about who and how they do their blends. For us, my English breakfast and my Irish breakfast are absolutely traditional. So my English breakfast is predominantly Kimun with a little bit of, of Assam in them. Uh, and so that may adjust every year. Keep in mind, tea is an agricultural product, right? It changes with flavor every year. The idea behind these blends were to try to keep the flavor consistent year after year. So the blend's not consistent year to year because the plant doesn't get consistent sunlight, water, um, name it, right? And so you need to, as the blender, adjust every year. But we stay predominantly cumin on our English breakfast. So this is gonna be a softer of the two breakfast blends. The Irish breakfast is predominantly a psalm with some Ceylon and Kimu. That alters every year um, just as dramatically as the English breakfast does. Because again, you're dealing with terroir, which alters and it's a good agricultural product. So, but we're trying to stay with a consistent um, blend and flavor and mouthfeel. So you can absolutely write a breakfast teas here in the United States. We stick our cream and sugar in them. Absolutely can do that. You can even do that to a Ceylon. I'm always the first one to tell you that. Take them out, uh, try it straight. Because what you'll find, especially if you go to compare them, is you're gonna find three very unique teas. And that's usually a good way for you to decide which one you like the best. So keep exploring. We hope you enjoyed learning more about tea with us. Hit the subscribe button so that you can be notified when we add more videos to our channel. And check out the highlighted videos to learn even more about tea. And last but not least, you can check out all of the teas we talk about in our videos at dominionteed.com.